Alright, what's up everybody? Your buddy Greg here from Punchy Bags and Skunk Boxing Media Incorporated. And today we're going to talk about the right hand. We're going to talk about different ways to throw the right hand. We're going to talk about fight how fighters, different professional fighters throw the right hand. We're going to talk about uh, variations of the right hand, how to, uh, how, what not to do or how not to throw the right hand, uppercut. We're just going to talk about the right hand today. <laughs> but before we get to that, I want to say people that's new to the channel, uh, you're looking at your boy Greg here. I'm a, a retired professional prize fighter with over uh, 100 amateur fights and WJJ Pro fights. And so, yeah, we know what we're talking about here. So, yeah, right here. A lot of people, uh, uh, I mean, first I'm going to demonstrate how to draw right here, how I throw the right hand. Then uh, we're going to talk about different variations. So, to throw the right, right hand is a very important point. You want to stop, stop. First of all, you throw the right hand from, from this angle here. You don't want to have... You don't, you don't want to have your right hand right here. You, you, want, to, you want to make sure your right hand is right here, okay? And you throw, throw the right hand by turning your waist. And listen, here, let me just say this before I forget. I see guys doing this stuff on the back all the time. You're not going to fight nobody that little. Point blank. You're not going to fight any midgets. So what you, how you practice is how you're going to fight. So if you practice doing this jump, that's how you're gonna fight. So what happens when you practice like this and you fight a guy that's tall? When you throw up here, it's gonna be un, uh, unnatural. You know, you, it's gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna be at a disadvantage already uh, uh, because, because of that. So practice how you're gonna fight. So you put the punches up here. Okay, let's get back to the right hand. Right here. You wanna, uh, an effective right hand is always gonna be thrown off your back leg, okay? Back leg, this way you're pushing it off, simultaneously turning your waist, and then this is where you should be when you when you when you're at the apex of the punch. Okay? When you're going at the apex of the punch, this way this is why where you where you should be. You push it off your back leg, turning your waist, and turning your uh, turning your right fist counterclockwise corner clock, before contact. Let me just tell you a little something else. Uh, a good punch is like a whip. When you do it, the energy is at the extension of the whip. Okay, so when you throw, that's what that's what old timers mean when they say, "Put some snap on your punches." There's one thing I want you to do for me. What? Come here. Win. Win. What are we waiting for? Take this. Get out of here! 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 Get out of
snap on your punches. This is what they mean when they say put some snap on your punches. You want to snap on your punches. Pop, 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 pop. You want to pop on your punches. So look at, look at it like my coach was telling me. Uh, we, we always talk about planting, where you power, sorry, you gain power when you plant. That's why I don't go for all that feet up in the air jump. This jump here. Don't ever put your feet up in there, any one of your feet up in there. Whenever you're gonna punch, you always plant. I don't care if you move around and dance around initially, but when you're gonna punch, you plant. Boop, 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 let your punches go. Then if you wanna move around after that, that's fine. But, but, but while you're punching, you always plant. Everything's coming from your back leg on your right hand. So push off your back leg and you simultaneously, simultaneously turn your waist while you're extending your punch, okay? That's really the, the range, that's really the range of motion. That's where your punch, that's where, see punches are, they, a lot of people say punches are born, not made. I don't really believe that because our, 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 the man who slew it took a skinny little kid and turned him into a, one of the most horrifying punches ever, Tommy Hearns. So I, I believe you can make punches. You just have proper form. That means planting, not all that arm punching jump you see kids doing these days. They're letting people get away with that smacking. You know what I mean? All that smacking. You gotta turn your waist, okay? Just, there we go, nice and slow for you. From the back leg, just look at it like, like your power is coming from your foot. It's coming up your leg, through your waist, through your arm, and energy is released. Pow! Right there. So here's how it looks in, here's how it looks in uh, real time. Whoop! See there? Got my nice waist turn in there. Got the snap on the punch. I got the push off. You knock guys out this way. You know what I mean? That's how you knock guys out. Right hand. This is, you know, some people throw the overhand right, which is a. Uh, that's the overhand right. Uh, there's different variations. Straight rights. There's, uh, you know, let me just say this too before I forget. And I see this happening a lot with uh, people throwing uppercut, uh, lead right uppercuts. Let me tell you something. If any trainer tells you throw a lead right uppercut, fire them right on the spot. Because you, first of all, I don't believe you should throw any, I don't think you should throw any hooks or uppercuts uh, from, the, from the back here anyway. I don't believe in that. I think it's just too much uh, space to cover, it's not It's not economical to me. I I don't think you should throw, throw a, 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 more especially a lead, a lead uppercut or a lead hook. You obviously got to throw uppercuts. I, I, I used to use uppercuts when, when you got aggressive fighters or back up, shoot them uppercuts in there, back up, shoot them uppercuts. Or if you're on the ropes, you're kind of leaning in with your guy, your uppercut, I've got it. But if you're outside and you're boxing someone, you should never, so uh, if you're an orthodox fighter, which means you know your right hand's in the back, you should never, absolutely never throw a right, a, a right, a right hook from the outside. I don't care who says, yeah, you, you know, you can go down the timeline right now and, and pick a thousand videos where you got jackasses telling you, oh yeah, you can do that. They don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm going on record say, shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't throw. A, a, a hook from the from the back foot like that. It's too much. It's, it's too much spin. Listen, simple physics prove my point. The quickest way to, to get to point A to point B is a straight line, right? Okay. So if I'm going straight and you're coming around here, who's gonna get there first? So if a guy throw, if a guy's gonna throw a uh, wild right hook from the back foot, I'll just jab him. That's, that's all it is. Pop, pop, all day long. Every time I see him set up and flinch, I'll just. Stick a jab down his fist. And uh, the reason why they say uppercuts are dangerous punches because of these seven things. Guys throwing them wild bolo uppercuts. I know it looks pretty. I see a couple of my boys do it. <laughs> and, and look, you get away with some of this stuff if, hypothetically speaking, you're talking, you're fighting a guy that's extra slow. Like if I'm fighting a guy that's extra slow, like just molasses slow. I can get away with certain things. I can cut, I, in other words, I can cheat the rules a little bit. But when you're talking about a world-class fighter who, who knows what he's doing, these, these are the mistakes that separate the men, men from the boys. You don't make these little amateur mistakes. Don't throw lead uppercuts 
with the backhand from the back. Don't do it. I don't care who tells you to do it. I'll suck a punch of myself for talking that nonsense. Right hooks, even if you're a softball. Cause I, look, if I'm a softball, set up in a softball stance, I'm not throwing left hooks from the back. If you do, you're just an idiot. If you're in with training like that, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm telling you right now, you know, the quickest way to, to, to a point is, is straight lines. So you use straight lines. And listen, when you talk about all these fancy uppercuts, you see guys with all these uh, shoe shiny junk, <laughs> all that junk. All this, when they hit the bag, because these days people hit, when they, they hit the bag and they're always here, always inside. In the fight, most of you guys don't get inside. So why are you practicing inside fighting all the time? All this stuff there. <laughs> all that stuff there when you're out here during the fight all the time. Okay? Why, why not stick with what you're going to be doing in the ring? I don't, I'm not, I don't believe you should do anything you're not going to do in the fight. If you do it in the fight. If you're not going to do it in the fight, don't do it. What's the point? So, go back to what Bruce Lee said. So, anyway, talking about the right hand. Uh, uppercuts, uh, uh, dangerous shots, but here's how you throw the right uppercut. I just demonstrated for you nice and slow. Again, everything's from where? From your back leg, just playing down, and you're turning your waist. Let me just say this too. Uh, all your power comes from your core. Again, I don't care what anybody says. People tell teaching bad technique, people teaching bad philosophy, people teaching bad everything. I'm telling you, this is all your power comes from your core, right here. So that means all your power is coming from your waist. This way, your power. That's why, Joe, and I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. That's why Joe Lewis, go look at some of his old fights. That's why he, 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 this was Joe Lewis right here. When he threw that hook, he wasn't winding up, smacking all that, all that smacking crap. He was right here, boom. See that? Boom. Boom, boom. That's what I say. He did he, no wasted movement. He just knocked out. Boom. Cause all the power is right here. I'll prove it again. Go look at the old Bruce Lee one inch punch. And watch when he has the one when he does the one inch punch. It's all waste. It's all here. All your, all your power comes from here. So you have to turn your waist. That's why all this arm punching junk, don't do it. If you want power, don't do it. I just want not a big fan of uh switch hit. Now I know there's been a lot of great fighters that have a switch hit is. A great, great fighters like Marvin Hagler. Like you go down the list. I'm not a big fan of it because most kids, most uh, kids can't, people can't do what great, what these greats do. Which is why a lot of fighters can't get away with what Floyd does. You see everybody doing that Floyd style here now. I had to show the rule, pop shot, jump, but they don't have the reflexes or the natural talent to do it. So you get your own style. I tell people all the time, you want to be a great fighter, incorporate your own style. And that's where you take. A, a, a rock and roll guy, he plays those, he practices with him. When he first begins learning how to play, he's practicing everybody else's songs. What he's doing, practicing everybody else's songs. Eventually he gets so good that he starts putting his own spin on it. The same thing with boxing, okay? You, you're going to practice Ali's jab, or Floyd Mayweather's shoulder roll, or, 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 or Julian Jackson's right hand, or, or, or you know, you want to practice uh, these punches with the, from these great established professionals. But you want to stop getting good enough to incorporate in your own style. Ben Holyfield's, the bop that Ben Holyfield had, you know, you know, that little rhythm that he had. Get your own rhythm, you know what I mean? That's how you become a great fighter. Boxing is 80% mental. It's only 20% physical. So you can get guys to teach you how to throw a jab, you teach you how to throw it right here. But if you ain't here right mentally, you're not going to make it anyway. It's about this in here. I try to tell you guys, it's, 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 it's about hot and desire to win. Fighting. If you got a good one, two, and the guy got the one, two, three, four, five, but he ain't got the right motivation, the right uh, hot, and, and, and you're going to beat him. Even just with your one, two. You ever see a guy that only got a one, two, and this other guy that's, that's you got all the punches, but the guy with the one, two wins the fight because he's in better shape and the other guy's not. So there's a lot of intangibles that go into uh, combat and and being a good fighter, you know, and, and it all starts here, right here, baby. All right, I got off track a little bit. Right here, I just want to demonstrate how to throw a straight right, straight right. I told you, back leg, boom, there you go, boom, there you go. Overhand right, boom, there you go. Uppercut, difficult punch, and I, I see people teaching Strictly arm. Uh, I want to uh, firstly tell the people to uh, go jump in a lake because you don't know what you're talking about. 
You do not throw a uppercut, right uppercut with your arm. You don't throw any punch with your arm. You throw every, every punch with your waist and your feet and your legs. You get your whole body into your punch. Bruce Lee told you that years ago, remember? Put your body into your punch. You throw hooks, everything you throw, you put your body into it. Same thing with uppercut. Uppercut, you start here, and you... My man, my man Jason, uh, 2004 U.S. Olympian Jason Estrada, uh, put it perfectly uh, in one of, one of my videos. You go check the video out where he explains uh, 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 how to throw punches, uh, Jason, uh, Olympian Jason Estrada. But he put it perfectly, and I like the way he put it. It's just like, like, like a golf swing. Uppercuts are like a golf swing. When you swing, that's how you're throwing the uppercut, like a golf swing. You're, you're not winding up, by the way. You're right from here, nice and compact from your leg, and you're coming up. Boop! There you go. That's it. Not this stuff. Or oh, arm. Um, see, nothing's moving but my arm. See? Anytime nothing's moving but your arm, wrong technique. Point blank. That goes to do any punch. Hook, pop. Turn with your hook. Turn with boom. If you're doing this, arm, um, arm. Um, wrong technique. I'm going to expose all this stuff. I'm sick of these jackasses teaching wrong technique. Anyway, there you go. Right here. Pop. Right up a cup. Boop. Overhand right. Pop. Listen, there was a shot that Ray Lit that I used to like to do. It was the right to around, he used to come around to the liver. Now remember we talked about not throwing punches from the back, from the back foot, hook punches. Now Sugar Ray Robinson got away with that. You know why? Because he's he's got God different talent. Same way Ali can pull back from punches and don't get hit, but if the average person tries to pull back from punches, you get knocked out. Same way that Floyd Mayweather naturally God gifted. You can do that shoulder roll stuff, but when people try it, bam, you get knocked out. So get your own style, get your own rhythm, get your own thing. You know what I mean? Uh, Shoe Ray Robinson used to throw that round, that round pulse hook to the body, which by the way, he's, he, he keeps his hands up here and he's coming down there, okay? And then I'll end with this. It was a punch that I used to like to throw. It was kind of a sneaky sucker punch type punch was basically I set guys up with the jab. I hit them with the jab for about a half a round so they get, so they get preoccupied with my jab, you know? And I just throw the jab from different angles, drop a couple downstairs, and when he's preoccupied with the jab, I feign it, and I go downstairs. So when he's, when he's preoccupied with the jab, then I faint, Boom, downstairs. Wide open. Just looking for the jab all day long. So this is chess, this ain't checkers. You gotta set guys up, set set traps. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's the lesson today on the right hand. We went on a little bit of philosophy. I was all over the place, but you know what it is. <laughs> Your boy Greg from Punching Bags, Scum Foxy Media Incorporated, dropping that knowledge and that wisdom to you guys. Uh yeah, there you go. I'll be back with the next one. You know how it is. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.